simply re uh, modify the value of 10 to 15 because that's the next lowest value in the tail on the left side of the distribution. And in this side here, where we've got 17 and 22, well, the 17, the 22 now becomes the 17 because that's the next highest value. This is called 20% Windsorized because 20% of the observations have been modified to the next lowest or highest uh, data points that are not suspected to be outliers. That's a very extremely basic example. Uh, now, Windsorizing, when should you use it? When you believe the data you're dealing with are valid points uh, derived from a heavy tail distribution, people use the term heavy tail distribution, I think when you're only dealing with a couple of observations, it doesn't really change uh, the distribution very substantially. Uh, to go back to the, um, the current salary example, here the person uh, that's suspected as being an outlier, but you're not convinced that it's a measurement error, that it's a typographical error, and that it's a, c a contamination and the distribution error. These are all legitimate values. It's just the nature of uh, salary data that there are outlying observations, quote unquote. So to get rid of this problem that might affect our uh, statistical analyses, we then just re add an extra person to the value of $110,625,000. So that's why I've got times two here. So originally there was only one person that had $110,625, 110625 dollars as 110,625, and now you can see that the frequency actually increased. There's two people that are in that. Um, that have that uh, data point for salary. And that's Windsorizing. And it's really quite simple to do. And I suspect in the vast majority of cases, when you've got an outlier, it's not because of some error. It's just the nature of the data. And so you should Windsorize. It's a, it's a legitimate procedure that's been done in the past. Uh, some considerations. Uh, Windsorizing or trimming one or two data points isn't uh, a very big deal when it accounts for less than 5% of your total data. And so you can be confident that the p-value of the, say, t-test or correlation analysis that you're doing is going to be roughly accurate. But when you're dealing with uh, larger amounts of data that have been Windsorized or trimmed because you have a large number of outliers, it becomes uh, more uh, important, it becomes more consequential to the p-values in terms of accuracy. And you may have to use alternative approaches to estimating a p-value, such as bootstrapping or randomization tests. Uh, and an al uh, maybe an alternative is to adjust the degrees of freedom according to a published uh, report that's uh, demonstrated um, alternative uh, degrees of freedoms for 10% trimmed or 20% trimmed data points. And I'll put some references uh, in the summary of this uh, YouTube video. And, uh, and eventually I'll have a link to a, a web page that talks about this in, gre in greater detail and has more references. Uh, so I hope you found this HowToStats.com video useful and that you're not really worried about outliers anymore. We can handle them. Uh, we just have to either trim them uh, or more frequently, I suspect, we simply have to Windsorize our data points. And in most cases, it's not going to have a big impact on your results. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching this HowToStats.com video.